Ads heard during the podcast that are not in my voice are placed by third-party agencies outside of my control and should not imply an endorsement by Weird Darkness or myself. Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. Picture it. You and your better half are on your way home after a night on the town. It's late, it's dark, and you pull into the gas station for a pack of smokes. Your partner runs in, you wait in the car. You're sitting there, idly waiting for them to return when suddenly you get this inexplicable, overwhelming feeling of terror. You sit up a little straighter and glance toward the driver's side window, and there, staring in at you, are two children. But not just any children. These are black-eyed children, and they want to get into the car with you. Sounds like something out of one of those Village of the Damned sequels, right? Well, it's not. This is real life, as real as it gets, and this is just one of thousands of reported sightings. Black-eyed children are knocking on doors and tapping on windows, asking to be let in all over the world. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Weird Darkness. Here you'll find stories of the paranormal, supernatural, legends, lore, the strange and bizarre, crime, conspiracy, mysterious, macabre, unsolved, and unexplained. Coming up in this episode… The bell rings, you answer the door, and you're met by two young boys. A normal event in the life of everyday people, but have those children on your doorstep ever had jet black eyes? A woman makes the mistake of letting one of these children into her home, and now she's dying. More and more reports are coming in about the after-effects of meeting BEKs even years after the encounter. Most BEK encounters are the children trying to get into your home, but there is also a story of a normal child going door-to-door -door and one of those doors is answered by a black-eyed adult. If you're new here, welcome to the show, and if you're already a member of this weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen, and please leave a rating and review in the podcast app you're listening from. Doing these things helps the show to keep growing. And while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to connect with me on social media, and more. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the Weird Darkness. BECs or BEKs, black-eyed children or black-eyed kids, have, as the name implies, black eyes, completely void of color or light. No pupils, no irises, just dead-looking black eyes. In fact, some witnesses say their eyes seem to be bottomless pools of blackness. These children, typically between the ages of 8 and 16, have very pale skin some people say it even looks plastic or artificial, but other than that, they look like normal children. Witnesses say they either dress in drab clothes, generally blue jeans and a hoodie, or they wear very old-fashioned, handmade clothing similar to what Amish people might wear. Sometimes they travel in pairs, sometimes in groups, sometimes you'll see just one. Regardless, these BECs seem to evoke an instant feeling of terror. Not just suspicion or even fear, but pure, gut-wrenching, I think I might crap my pants but who cares because I'm about to die anyway, mind-numbing terror. What do they do that's so terrifying? Nothing really, they just ask to enter your home or your vehicle. But it's not what they ask, it's how they ask it. Witnesses report 
that the children approach and try to get you to let them into your home to use the phone or ask you to give them a ride home because they are lost or maybe they forgot something. And when they speak, it's in a monotone, almost hypnotic voice. One witness even compared it to hypnosis that she'd undergone to quit smoking. No matter what you say to these children, they don't answer questions or speak about anything else. They just keep saying, let us in, we won't hurt you, this won't take long. This won't take long? To me, that sounds like those children in the Village of the Damned, and that movie always, always freaks me out. Now, I know you're probably thinking these are just children wearing black contact lenses, but David Weatherly, who has written a book called Black-Eyed Children, says that may be true in some cases. However, black lenses would cover the entire surface of the eye, and they're very expensive and extremely uncomfortable. Given the average age of black-eyed children is 13, he doesn't think most children would be able to afford lenses like that, nor would they be able to wear them for any length of time. Jason Offit is another paranormal researcher who's done some digging into the black-eyed children phenomenon, and I accidentally tripped over his blog. It was here that I found the following account. At about 10.45 on a warm night, 18-year-old Karis Holdsworth was walking to her apartment from a friend's house in Lisburn, a city in Northern Ireland near Belfast. Her apartment was in a bad section of town. As she approached, she noticed two teenagers in hoodies and jeans standing in her yard with their backs to her. Of course, she was immediately wary and put her hand in her purse to grab hold of her pepper spray. As she was sneaking around the corner, the two boys turned simultaneously to face her, which really freaked her out. She says she felt raw fear when she saw their faces. However, Karis did have her pepper spray in her purse, and she was still alert enough to defend herself should the boys approach. But they didn't. Instead, they seemed able to read her mind. No need for that, the older one spoke, calmly and maturely. We just want to borrow your phone, miss. Karis said they looked just like two normal boys, until, that is, she saw their eyes. They were pitch black, no trace of white or pupil at all, she said. She felt she was in terrible danger and had to get away. Running for her door and fumbling with her keys, the boys following closely at her heels, the boys continued to ask to use the phone. Please, miss, my mother won't be happy if she doesn't know where we are. I wanted to obey them at first, considering that they were young, she said, but seeing their eyes took me away. I just had to get away from them both, and I knew if I obeyed them, I was going to seriously regret it. Karis managed to make it inside her apartment and locked the door, but just as she was about to sit down with a cup of coffee, there came a knock. When she ignored it, the knock came again, and she immediately felt a sense of overwhelming terror. When she peeped out the peephole, there they were again, both boys staring at her. Just let us in to use the phone, he said. We won't hurt you. We have no weapons to hurt you with. Karis opened the door and ordered the children to leave her alone. Locked everything up, tight as a drum afterwards, and then called a friend. When the friend arrived, the boys finally hightailed it out of there, but not before she too felt an overwhelming sense of danger. Karis soon moved to another neighborhood but says, I always check through that peephole before I go to sleep, she said. I don't know exactly what those boys were, but I do know they meant me harm and that they weren't human in any way. I still get scared thinking about it. So what are these black-eyed children? Weatherly seems to think they are an alien-human hybrid, particularly because they bear a strong resemblance to men in black. He's also a little inclined to believe that they might have some sort of demonic origin, because a lot of the reports say these children seem to vanish into thin air. Some witnesses also report a huge run of bad luck or even death after encountering one of these soulless children. In the last few years, the frightening phenomenon of the black-eyed children visitations has swept the internet. 
Whether or not the stories of midnight encounters with the mysterious black-eyed kids have any truth to them has been a hotly debated topic, but that hasn't stopped tales of the BEKs from popping up on message boards, in chat rooms, and on paranormal podcasts, such as this one. Who are they? Where do they come from? What do they want? No one is really sure. No matter who tells the story, the encounters always occur the same way. Someone home alone in the middle of the night hears a knock on the door. When they peek through the window, children, normally in a pair, are seen standing in the cold. As the resident cautiously cracks open the door to see what might be wrong, a familiar feeling of dread washes over them. The strange children beg to be let inside, but something isn't right. There's something off about these kids. As the lonely resident looks closer, they see that these children's eyes are black as an oil slick, an unnerving detail that causes them to slam the door and deny their pleas for entrance. Some of them call the police. Others clutch a weapon. But never, ever do they let the black-eyed children inside. Until now. The following chilling eyewitness account comes from a woman who emailed me to say that she made the mistake of letting the black-eyed kids inside her home, and now she claims she's paying the ultimate price. Her story comes as a warning to those willing to open their door more than a crack. I've edited the letter for grammar, redacted the identifying information, and slightly altered the introduction, but beyond that, the following report is submitted exactly as it arrived. Let me start by saying that I know how hard this all will be to believe, but now that things have taken a turn for the worse, I started looking for stories similar to mine and found your site. I feel like I should share this story with someone and your website seems like the right place. I made the mistake of letting the black-eyed kids inside and now I'm worried that I might die because of it. I hope this will be a warning to everyone who is ever in the position to make the same mistake I did. I live just outside of a rural town in Vermont. It's a tight-knit community where everyone knows one another and people don't lock their doors at night. There's never been any need to. A little over a year ago, I woke up because I heard a loud banging on my front door. At the time, my husband and I lived in a small home on a dirt road just off the rural route into town. It was the middle of a snowstorm and the nearby hills get very slippery in the snow so I thought that perhaps somebody may have been in an accident and broken down. It has happened before. When I looked out the window, I could see that our motion spotlight was on. I could see that there were footprints in the snow that had come from our road and into our driveway, but there was no car anywhere. The snow was still covering the road and no one had driven on it for at least a couple of hours. Our front door was obscured from the window, but I could see that someone was standing there. I wasn't sure what to think, so I woke my husband up just to feel safer. While I was telling him what was going on, the banging on the door started again, and my husband went to answer it while I stood in the hallway. When he opened the door, there were two children standing in the snow looking toward the ground. They were a boy and a girl and could not have been more than perhaps eight years old. They were dressed strangely and had odd haircuts. The girl's hair was very long and straight, and the boy had a dated haircut that looked almost like a bowl cut. They weren't dressed for winter, and my first thought was that they must have been Mennonite children, but as far as I know, there has never been a large community of Mennonites near us. Thinking back on it now, I know that my normal reaction to seeing children in a snowstorm would have been to rush them inside and bundle them up with some blankets and hot cocoa but that's not how this felt. The children were very unnerving. They would not make eye contact, and when my husband asked them if everything was okay, they asked if they could come in. My husband looked at me like, what do I do? And I asked the kids where their parents were. They'll be here soon, is all they said. It was around two o'clock in the morning at this point, so the only reasonable thought in my head was that there must have been an accident, or these kids maybe got lost. As much as my instincts told me not to bring them inside, I did so anyway. I went into the kitchen to make them some hot cocoa 
while my husband took them into the living room. While I was fixing the kettle, I could hear my husband talking to the kids. He was asking them if they were okay, where they came from, how far they walked, if their parents' car was broken down, things like that. But they always answered, our parents will be here soon. They spoke in a sing-songy voice. They weren't afraid to be in a stranger's home at all. I started to notice that our cats, we had four, were all hiding, except Pigeon who was in the kitchen with me. Normally our cats are very curious and friendly, and we have to be careful that they don't run out the door when we leave. This time none of them even tried to see who was here, which I thought was very strange. All of the hair on Pigeon's neck was standing up and his tail was puffed up while he looked into the living room. When I bent down to pet him to see what was wrong, he hissed and started growling and backed up until he had hit himself under the kitchen island. I have never seen him do that before. When I walked back into the living room, the kids were sitting on the couch as still as can be, but my husband was holding his head in his hands. I asked him what was wrong and he said that he just felt dizzy all of a sudden, but that he was fine. I turned back to the children to give them their cocoa, but when they looked at me, I gasped. It took everything inside of me not to drop the mugs and run away. When they looked at me, their eyes were completely black. They had no whites, just giant black pupils. When they saw that I was scared, they stood up and asked if they could use the bathroom. I tried to be as composed as I could and showed them down the hall. They went into the bathroom together, and I hurried back to my husband to ask him if he had seen their eyes. He had seen them too and said that it looked like his brother's badly bruised eyes after a car accident. We were in the middle of talking about whose children they could be when my husband's nose started to bleed. He'd never had nosebleeds as long as I'd known him. I just knew inside myself this had something to do with the kids in the bathroom. I started crying while I ran to get my husband some tissues. That's when the power went out. I heard my husband yell my name from the living room and as I started to walk back through the hallway, I stopped dead in my tracks. The two children were standing at the end of the hallway. They weren't moving, and I've never been so scared in my whole life. They just stood there in the dark. After what felt like forever, the boy said, Our parents are here. And they walked to the door, opened it, and walked out, leaving it wide open. My husband jumped up to close it and almost fell over. We looked out the window and saw two men standing by a black car idling at the end of our driveway. The men looked like they were wearing black colored suits and were very tall, at least six feet. When my husband waved at them, they just stared at us, got into the car, and drove off. Our power came on about a half an hour later, but nothing was the same after that. Over the next few months, three of our cats went missing. We can only assume that they ran away somewhere and never came back, but the worst thing was coming home to find Pigeon in a puddle of blood on the living room floor. He looked as if he'd been vomiting blood. The vet told us he had some kind of hemorrhage. After my husband's nosebleeds became a regular occurrence, we went to see the doctor. He didn't know what to make of it other than dry nasal passages, but my husband was diagnosed with an aggressive skin cancer. When the doctor asked us if he used tanning beds, we both thought he was joking, but apparently this kind of melanoma is linked to overuse of indoor tanning. The doctors think he will recover, but don't understand how it got so bad so quickly. My husband has never worked an outdoor job and spends relatively little time in the sun. Since we let the black-eyed kids inside our home I have also suffered from regular dizzy spells and nosebleeds on a regular basis. I've had other issues, which I won't mention here, but trust me when I say that I am suddenly in the worst condition of my life and no one can do anything about it. I know that all of this is because I let the black-eyed children into my home. We've told everyone we could about the strange kids that showed up that night, but no one else saw them and some laugh at how scared we were of the Mennonite kids, but we know what we saw. I wish my husband had never opened the door.
feel free to use this as a warning to others about the Black Eyed Kids. My advice would be to lock your doors, call the police, and wait for morning. Don't make the same mistake that I did. Another account comes from an airman at a Texas military base. It's one thing to scare a woman alone in her home, but to terrify a trained military man on base? That only goes to show how frightening these kids really are. Buckle up because this story is a good one. I'm a 6 foot 7, 260 pound airman who was prior Special Forces. About a month ago, while stationed at a base in Texas that I will not disclose, I was drinking a beer when I heard a knock on my dorm door. I got up out of bed thinking it was my pissmate, and since we have Jack and Jill styled bathrooms connecting our rooms, I opened our bathroom door and there was nothing. Being confused as heck, I heard this sharp rapping on my door again, so I look out my peephole. Now, the hole being quite settled halfway down the door, I had to bend down to look through it. Standing there in front of me was a boy who looked about 17 or 18 at the most. I asked, what's up? And he looked up with a smile that I can only describe as partially cruel and hungry looking. With a gaunt face, the boy asked me if he could use my phone. I said, sorry bud, I'm about to go to sleep, so try the SP building across the parking lot. I closed the door, thinking nothing of it. He knocked again, and I walked over to my window, this time to intimidate the boy into leaving me be. I pulled my blinds up and looked straight at him. He looked up at me. I'd say he was only five foot nine, maybe about 140 pounds, real gaunt and frail looking. Believe me when I say I don't scare easily, but something about him made me feel uneasy as all get out. He looked up at me and asked if he could come in again, and then I saw his eyes. They were empty looking coals and a smile crept to his mouth, that same hungry predatory smile, and I felt goosebumps on my legs and back. Something wasn't right. I said, I'm going to tell you one more time before I kick your ass to get lost. I turned around to get my phone and looked back, and he was gone. The only thing that I can't help but shake is this feeling that I'd seen him somewhere before. In Pennsylvania, two years before that night, I was working in a gas station. Late one night, I was working an 11 to 7 shift in late October, still in high school when I saw him walk across a four-lane highway to our pumps and stare at me and my brother who was outside smoking a cigarette. My brother yelled over to him asking if he needed anything and it was that same reply. He needed to use our phone. My brother told him it was behind the counter and he can't use it, but the kid kept on coming closer. We went inside and he stood in front of the shop glass and he just knocked for about five or so minutes until my brother got a bat and went outside. He said the same thing I did. The kid had a white face and black eyes. I am uneasy about this. I shouldn't be terrified like this. Whether they're banging on doors at military bases or frightening residential homeowners, the black-eyed children show no signs of slowing their terror tour of America. But now these encounters have started to take a darker turn. People are actually dying in strange ways after meeting the BEKs. Eyewitness accounts continue to spill out from those who've had run-ins with the black-eyed children, and the woman from Vermont who claims she's dying, she's not alone in her maladies. The following report comes from a woman named Jamie Lynn who claims that one of her own friends was also suddenly stricken with an aggressive cancer after meeting the Black Eyed Children. My friend took a road trip to see a friend in California. They visited, said their goodbyes, and he stopped by a bar to have a drink before going to his hotel for the night. The bartender was a beautiful woman, my friend was extremely attractive, and she served him and chatted and smiled. After a few more drinks, the woman told him he could stay at her place. She said to leave his car there and she'd drive him back the next day, as her place was hard to find and somewhat remote. He took her up on the offer. 
He told me later that he began to be very fearful when they arrived at her home. She took him to her room and, of course, the inevitable sex experience. He said he was actually frightened of her then as well, as she was not acting normally and sounded almost inhuman in a way. After laying in bed for a while, the woman had fallen asleep and he got up to get water from the kitchen. As he was walking to the sink, he saw numerous small, frightening-looking children walking to and fro about the place. It was a large two-story house. He wondered what they were doing up at 2 or 3 a.m. if they had school the next day. He also said they looked at him with completely black eyes, and he was terrified of them, that he had horrible feelings about them. It turns out the woman owned the bar, and she did return him the next day. She forced him out, and he had to walk to the highway. I met up with him a week or two later, and he seemed perfectly fine but a little frazzled. About a month later, this extremely healthy, athletic individual was diagnosed with bladder cancer, and no medication or treatment would impact his condition. He believed it was directly related to that experience with the black-eyed children. He died about six months after his diagnosis. The thought of little kids with black eyes running around knocking on people's doors in the middle of the night is scary enough, but the reports of cancer and other strange illnesses take this BEK phenomenon to a whole new level. You definitely do not want to let them in. In 1998, the first reports of the black-eyed children began to surface online, with appearances cited in Abilene, Texas and Portland, Oregon. For the next two decades, the reports of creepy children began to appear in frightening stories that permeated the internet, books, and even films. But despite theories of alien-human hybrids, evil origins, and other attempts at digging up the truth, one question has always remained. Who were the parents of the black-eyed kids? Now a woman has come forward with her own encounter from the 90s that might just answer that question. Her story is one of the very few that involve black-eyed adults and falls perfectly into the timeline that sparked the arrival of the black-eyed kids. Melissa S. writes in with this story from Pennsylvania. Years ago, when I was a child, I was selling Girl Scout cookies around my neighborhood. Back then, parents were more relaxed and didn't mind a child going door-to-door on their own as much as they do today. I lived in a safe neighborhood where nothing really happened. I was going house to house, but I wasn't having much luck. I saw this red car pull up into the driveway, so I ran to catch them as they exited the car. I was desperate to make some sales. I saw there were three of them as they got out of the car, two elderly people, one male and one female, and the third person was a young woman in her thirties. The elderly people saw me and got really excited. From far away, I thought their eyes looked black, but I assumed it was just because of the distance between us. I didn't make anything of it, but I thought something was off about them when they started excitedly running up to me. I put a smile on my face and said hello as they were running up, but my smile turned into an expression of horror when they came right by me and I saw their eyes truly were pitch black. They had no whites in their eyes. They looked down at me with huge smiles on their faces. I just froze in place with fear. They looked at each other for a second, and the women said something I couldn't understand to the black-eyed man. They looked right back at me. They were slightly bent down and just right in my face. The woman who was with them ran up, took their arms to pull them away, and sincerely apologized. She said, I'm so sorry, and hurried them inside. As soon as she took them and went towards the house, I became unfrozen and ran almost all the way back home. When I slowed down, I started to feel bad. I rationalized to myself that maybe they had some kind of disorder that made them that way. I mean, they did behave like two-year-olds. I tried looking it up years later, attempting to find a disorder that matched what I'd seen, but I couldn't find anything. Still, I thought maybe it was just a rare disorder, and that's why I couldn't find anything. It wasn't until a few years ago, 
When I found out about black-eyed children from a friend, did I realize that what I experienced was probably supernatural? And this raises so many questions. Who were those people? Why did they have black eyes? Why was that woman caring for them like they couldn't care for themselves? If the theories that these black-eyed people are really alien human children, then what are they doing living in a human neighborhood? Maybe it's a combination of messed up genes and mental illness. I'll never really know what they were and why a normal lady cared for them. Makes you wonder what people know that we don't. A kid going door to door bumps into the black-eyed adults? Talk about a role reversal. Thanks for listening. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, or unsolved mysteries like you do. You can email me anytime with your questions or comments through the website at WeirdDarkness.com. That's also where you can find all of my social media, listen to free audiobooks, shop the Weird Darkness store, sign up for the newsletter to win monthly prizes, find my other podcast, Church of the Undead, and more. Plus, if you have a true paranormal or creepy tale to tell, you can click on Tell Your Story. All stories in Weird Darkness are purported to be true unless stated otherwise, and you can find source links or links to the authors in the show notes. The Black Eyed Kids stories were written by Greg Newkirk and Donna Anderson for Week in Weird. And now that we're coming out of the dark, I'll leave you with a little light. Proverbs 10, verse 19. When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. And a final thought from Mandy Hale. If you don't love yourself, you'll always be chasing after other people who don't love you either. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness.